Hello everyone, Jeff Cote here with BoatingTechTalk.com. We have a fellow boater who is asking a question regarding battery switches and their use on their boats. All right, and this is a question that's gonna to apply to a lot of us actually. Um, and it's, I would say, many of us find this topic confusing. So honestly, there's no harm in asking a good question, right? Uh, the more we get to be better informed about how our boats behave, the less likely we are gonna be unpleasantly surprised. So David asks, is it okay to turn off the house battery switch when I'm shore power or should I leave it on? A further question is, maybe you can review the protocol or what you would recommend when leaving the boat at the dock. I normally just head out for weekends. Okay, all right. So let's first context, what's the purpose of a battery switch? A battery switch is a device that allows you to isolate not all things on the battery, but most things on the battery. And most things are called what's called the positive switch distribution, meaning it's a portion of your battery that all things connected to it, you want to be able to disconnect. So there's really two concepts with battery switches. There's things that are before the battery switch and things that are after the battery switch called unswitched and switched, right? And the reality is that most of the circuits on our boats, probably the large majority, like 95% or 99% are gonna be what are considered switched, meaning uh, a water pump, uh, a chart plotter, lights, all those things um, are gonna be on the switch side of your battery switch. There's certain things that should always work on your boat regardless of whether the battery switch is on or off. And that is your bilge pump your chargers, your alternators. There's a lot of devices that are charging, your solar, if you have solar, a wind turbine, whatever it is, those go to the unswitched side, meaning they're always on. So you can actually have that battery switch if everything's wired properly, and that's a big if, because as we know, it's a wild west with boating, but if your boat is wired, let's say quote unquote normal, um, you should be able to turn that battery switch to off and have only select few circuits enabled like a bilge pump, like a battery charger. Okay, so then the question uh, from David was, well, Jeff, what should I do with my battery switch when I leave the boat? Or even when I'm at the boat with shore power? Well, first of all, if you're actually utilizing your boat and you're connected to shore power, the reality is most of, a lot of the circuits on your boat are not powered by AC or DC. They're just actually powered by DC, direct current. And so what that means is they're actually powered by a battery. Now. Don't get alarmed. <laughs> the good news is you have a battery charger or you should have a battery charger. So when you're connected on shore power, hopefully your battery charger is sized big enough to offset whatever loads you're taking from your battery, right? So we want the charger to be able, you know, like I was on a boat uh, one day and they had a 20 amp charger and it was a 42, 46 foot boat. And so sometimes their loads would actually exceed what their charger was. And that's definitely a problem. But most of us are not gonna have that issue. So you definitely, when you're actually on shore power and you're staying on the boat, or you might be at a marina, you might be at a destination staying on your boat and you're connected to shore power, you're probably gonna wanna keep the house battery switch on because otherwise your water pump, a lot of your cabin lights, a lot of your circuits on your boat are DC powered only and will not work if you turn that battery switch off. And you should test this out, by the way. This is, can't harm anything. You should be on your boat at dock. Turn your battery switch off and see what circuits are not working. Curiosity is a gift, right? Because it answers so many questions, burning questions that we have as boaters. So A, on shore power, turn the battery and keep the battery switch on because most likely you're gonna need to run these loads that are powered by your battery, which are in turn recharged with a battery charger that is powered from shore power. So that's the condition for your battery switch when you're at shore power. Now, what happens when you're at shore power and you leave the boat? Well, then it gets interesting. As we are due in our homes, when we leave a home for an extended period of time or an apartment or a business, you know, we all learn certain habits from our parents. And those habits are to turn things off if you're not using it. So I would argue, and I'm certainly a big promoter, when I leave my own boat, I turn all circuits off that are not gonna be needed while I'm away. I do that for reasons of safety. I don't wanna have a circuit that's energized. Like for example, if my refrigerator, refrigerator doesn't have any food in it, the door is open so it doesn't get stale, 
why would I have uh, the circuit breaker on, right? And have that circuit energized. What happens if, I don't know, there's a fault on the fridge. I don't want to have any circuit energized that I'm not there, right? Because I want to be there in case something bad happens. So what you're going to be looking for is trying to see, okay, if I can't, what circuits should I disable on my boat? And generally, the good news is when you turn that battery switch off, you're effectively doing all that in the snap. In one turn of the switch, everything that is connected to that battery that should be off comes off or turns off. And the circuits that should stay on, like your battery charger, like your bilge pump, carbon monoxide, stereo memory, are always still going to be connected. So if your battery switch is done well, when you leave the boat and you don't plan on having anything powered from DC, other than the few items that I talked that are on the unswitched side, then yeah, I would actually turn off my battery switch because then it guarantees that you're not gonna have some problem or reduces the risk that you're gonna have an electrical problem when you're not on board. So great question, David, and thanks for asking. I wanna thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna get more of this cool content and also check out our website. If you've got questions that are unanswered, We've actually taken the time to answer quite a few questions and you might be surprised to find the answer right there on our website. So thanks again.